song. Operator? Yeah, so sad. She's living in LA with my best old ex-friend Ray. What's that song about? I think it's about a guy who's calling the um, operator to get a number because he wants to talk to his ex-girlfriend who left him for his ex-best friend who was named Ray. Oh, uh, with my best old ex-friend Ray, a guy that she said she knew once but almost hated. Kids, you're not going to remember Jim Croce. This is the story of Jim Croce. If you're over probably 60, you know who Jim Croce is because he had a million hits. If I could save time in a bottle, words could make wishes come true. I would save every day till eternity passes away. I would spend them with you, Michael Lyons. But you never seem to be enough time to do the things. But anyway, so, um, operator. It's just a heartbreak song, isn't it? Yeah, pretty much. Um, what, what, how does that go? He tries to call, and then he says, oh yeah, so the next line is, um, he asks the, op the operator, and she gives him the, the, the number. And then, he, and then he says, operator, can you help me place this call? Um, I can't read the number that you just gave me. There's something in my eye and it happens every time I think about the love that I thought would save me. Oh man, that's some that's some deep, sad poetry right there. Let me see if I can sing it. Um, operator, can you help me place this call? See the number on the matchbook is old and faded. She's living in L.A. with my best old ex-friend, Ray. No, that's what, what, something in my eye. You know what happens every time. I think about the love that I thought would save me. Anybody, any broken hearts out there tonight? Anybody out there got one-itis? What's one-itis? One-itis is when, when you have a broken heart and there's one person out there who uh, you just can't get over. And you, and you judge everybody else compared to that person. And they go, well, that person's not as pretty as you know, whoever that broke your heart. You have one-itis. You're sick. And the cause of your love sickness and is the same thing as the cure. It's that girl or that guy who's given you one itis. Don't have one itis. Have you ever had one itis? I had one itis for about twenty five years. <laughs> really? Yeah. How'd you get over it? Um, you know, when you have one itis, you have to kind of pretend you believe like part of the story. My story with my one itis was a girl named Natasha. Oh, Natasha from the show? Uh, no, different Natasha. But yeah, her name. Natasha from the uh, Buju Not a Buju show. Natasha is um, Not a Buju's girlfriend. Um, but I, I dated a girl named Natasha, Amaya Jones, hope the hey, Bushu, 
Maya. Welcome to the show. Michael's just talking about past girlfriends. And I'm getting pretty jealous here. Ah, uh, you know, nothing to worry about. Um, but I had one itis for Natasha for so many years because I just, it's not like I didn't know the whole story about our relationship, but I chose to just focus on the most beautiful, loving parts and exaggerate them in my memory. And I totally denied the parts. The thing about Natasha was that I broke up with her. And then I tried to get her back about a year later, and she had moved on. I never meant one word, I never meant one word, I never meant one word I said. I never meant one word, I never meant one word, I never meant one word I said. Now you're my one, and you're my only regret. I never meant one word, I never meant one word, I never meant one word I said. Lost my job just the other day, and like everybody else, well, I've got a mountain of bills I need to be paid. Then I lost my way. Now I don't know which way to go. But the wind may blow and the grass may grow For all we know, wind just might snow And what do I do when we become When the day is over and the night's begun What do I do about me and you? I told you before, we are so through but I never meant one word, I never meant one word, I never meant one word I said. I never meant one word, I never meant one word, I never meant one word I said. And I'm so sorry, I never treat you like that again, I never meant one word. I never meant one word, I never meant one word I said. Again, 
I never meant one word, I never meant one word, I never meant one word I said. <laughs> and then I tried to get her back about a year later and she had moved on. Um, and so I went about never kind of getting over her or in my mind until about a year ago. In fact, some people might even know I wrote a song called Natasha. And in the line, the middle of the, of the song, the lyric is, I used to sit up at night just so I could watch you. And I wrote on my bedroom wall, Michael loves Natasha. And the, um, oh, that's so sweet. Yeah, and it was literal. I had written on the wall with a Sharpie marker, Michael loves Natasha. And then she wrote underneath it, heart Michael. So it kind of read, Michael loves Natasha, heart Michael. And for 20 years, I talked about how much I loved her and how, you know, she was just great and I couldn't get over her and I wasn't even interested in her. Until about a year ago, I got real depressed about a lot of other stuff. And I finally admitted to myself, I just said it out loud and said, you know what? She never actually said, I love you back. She couldn't even get it, get herself to write it in a moment where I, you know, did this little gesture. Uh, we had a short relationship that was very physical. And I was very attracted to her. And she liked me, but she was by no means in love with me. Uh, and that's why I broke up with her, <laughs> you know, back then when I was thinking clearly. Uh, but then I just kind of put on blinders and I wanted to remember her as somebody who didn't not love me, but somebody who I rejected for no good reason and that she was in love with me but she wasn't in love with me I pulled the trigger to leave a relationship where I wasn't loved <laughs> but um, you know and it was sort of liberating to finally go you know what it's like getting over grief really yeah when you finally quit pining after some ex some broken heart or whatever it's just like when you finally stop recognizing the anniversary of somebody who died. Oh, it's been six years since Grandma died. On this day, we, she would have been a hundred and whatever. You gotta get over it. It serves nothing except perpetuating this kind of depressed mindset. That's, that's, that's really true, I think. What do you think? <laughs>